Good evening, Fernwood. My name is Neil, and thank you for coming back to watch me watch the entire series of the subversive soap opera, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. We are heading into April 12th, 1976, so let's get us caught up before we start this week. We've got a few different families that are involved in this show, so let's just take a look at each of the families, one family at a time, one household at a time. First, we've got the Shumways, who are George, Martha, and Kathy. George and Martha are the sort of elders of this show. And also, I forgot Grandpa Larkin, who is Martha's father. But George and Martha are Mary and Kathy's parents. And, you know, at this point, they don't really have much in terms of storyline going on. Grandpa and... Martha and George are really just sort of support characters, but we'll talk a little bit more about them as we go forward. Kathy most recently has been dating Dennis Foley, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go forward. The next household that I will take a look at are the Hagers. That is Loretta and Charlie Hagers, the country singing starlet and her slightly older than her husband, and slightly meaning I think a good 20 years. They have recently had their lives complicated by the visit of Muriel Haggers, that's Charlie's ex-wife, and depending on which episode you're looking at, they were either married for five months or five years. I'm a little bit confused. I, I could look it up. I don't know. I'm not gonna. Muriel, while she's been staying with Charlie and Loretta, has been doing her level best to eliminate any trace of happiness from Charlie's life by trying to split them up. She had a whole elaborate scheme where she had been wearing a fake scar on her face and accusing Charlie of having given it to her and really playing on the heartstrings of Loretta who was really taking her side until Charlie discovered that it was fake. So we've got a fake scar but then Muriel reveals a real son and that is a son named Timmy. Whew! We've got a lot going on there and then our main household and that's the Hartmans. That's Tom Mary and Heather and you know I'm going to talk a little bit more about Mary because she's got the most going on but in general about Tom and Mary's relationship I think they are each looking for meaning in different ways and that means that they don't have a lot of time to spend with each other. Tom has been looking for meaning through his workplace becoming a union officer an officer of the union at his factory even though he is now in that position, he's still not getting a ton of respect, and he hopes that Mary will listen to him, but Mary's got her own business going on, and they are not necessarily putting the work into understanding each other. Let's talk about Heather, though, next. Heather is Tom and Mary's sullen tween girl. The phrase tween had never been used at the point that this show exists, but she's in that age range. She's not quite, uh, not quite in puberty at least as the show is concerned like she's just on that edge there and mostly she's a sullen teen who would rather be watching television and gets into occasional trouble but mary her relationship to heather is that she really wants to be a mother to heather but heather won't have any of it heather does not understand why mary keeps asking her questions about her life and other things that she is discovering about her most recently, in their relationship, Mary had discovered a note, a love letter to a teacher from Heather. And in prying about that set of emotions, Heather escalated the situation to say that Heather hated Mary. And Mary's immediate response was to slap Heather in the face. And of course, immediately after that, to apologize for that. But their relationship is not so pretty. Then uh, I want to take a brief look at Mary's relationship to Kathy. As I said, Kathy has been dating Dennis Foley. Dennis and Mary have somewhat of a complicated relationship. He's been fascinated to obsessed with her since the very beginning of the series, just about episode one there including and up to the point where they have kissed multiple times and the most recent kiss was really 
just a couple of episodes ago, just before Kathy revealed to Mary that Dennis has proposed to her. Dennis's plan is that if he can't have Mary, because Mary keeps rejecting him, he, if he can't have Mary, he'll have something that keeps him close to Mary, and that is Kathy. And that is one reason, just one set of reasons why Mary wants Dennis and Kathy to have nothing to do with each other. Although she does seem to have some amount of feelings, my feelings for Dennis are quite complicated, but mostly I think he's kind of creepy. And then there's Mary's relationship to herself. And Mary is, you know, when she started the episode, was the consummate housewife. So much so that it really feels like autopilot for her. She can clean the house, she can do all the things, but she wants something more than that. And I don't think anyone around her really understands that. Mary looks for meaning in a variety of ways, but I don't think she has the tools to explore outside of her bubble. And her bubble would be the information that she gets from soap operas and from reading magazine articles that are written to be somewhat tawdry. Or, I mean, she does go to the library mostly for information about sex education, and she seems to be exploring that. But, you know, she's got, she's got some stuff to learn. I know for sure that Mary has been questioning her sanity. That's one of the relationships that she has with her grandpa, Raymond. I think she relates to him and he relates to her because he's somewhat eccentric and maybe a little bit crazy as the word is used in the show. And Mary relates to that. I think she really does feel like her world is not making sense anymore. Last we saw Mary though, she had been in bed for about an episode and a half. She really couldn't make her legs work one day. Then some medications came. And then really the last, last time that we saw her, she had taken a banquet of medications. She pretty much self-prescribed uppers and downers to balance themselves out. She was not looking too stable as she left home to go talk to Dennis about his relationship to Kathy. And I don't know if that's going to go too well. I think that's probably something we're going to see right away. That is my overall talk about all of the families of Mary Hartman and Mary Hartman that I occasionally will do. Let us begin the April 12th, 1976 episode. Let's just get this show on the road. Loretta, what's been going on in my life, I believe anything. 
actually see Charlie then, of course, birth the baby himself. You know, it was Muriel, his first wife, you know, who had it 15 years ago. You must feel awful about that. Oh, no, hon, I'm delighted. You know, as the man says, any son of Charlie's is a son of mine. Frankly, I'm just plum tickled pink about enlarging the family, you know? Oh, that's nice. Except it's going to cost us an arm and a leg to, to see the child. See, Muriel happens to be temporarily hurting for money, and she's not going to let us see Timmy. That's his name, Timmy. Until Timmy. she stops hurting. Everything's really awful, Mamie, particularly if Dennis getting married to Kathy. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Yeah, I just can't imagine anybody in the world doing something like that. Well, you know, he is very charming, and see, the thing is, she doesn't know that he didn't love her. Frankly, I don't know why I ever trusted her. Oh, no, she's very trustworthy. She's young, but she's very trustworthy. Mary, the woman will never see 40 again. And Charlie says that uh, he wouldn't trust her as far as he could throw a sack of fertilizer across the room that's been outside in the rain all night. Oh, Loretta. Mary, can I use your phone? I got to call somebody. Oh, sure. Who are you going to call? Uh, I have to call Clyde. Clyde? Oh, you know, Loretta, maybe I should just stop interfering in other people's problems. I mean, it just doesn't get me anywhere. Oh, uh, Clyde Hotz, Loretta. Hey, Loretta. I'm glad you called. I got great news for you. Oh, great. I could use some. There's another royalty check in the mail for you, and it's a big one. You better be sitting down when you open up that envelope. Oh, great. How wonderful. That's great. Okay, your record's <laughs> selling like hotcakes. You know, you can't miss making the top of the charts. And listen, are you ready for this? Well, yeah, hon. Keep on going. I like your music. You're booked to appear on the Dinah Show. The TV show? On Friday. Talk to you later, okay? Mary, I am going to be on the Dinah Show in Hollywood. Do you believe it? Yeah, what now? I can't believe it. Mary, I'm going to meet all the stars. I mean, everybody. I mean, Dinah's got all the big stars on her show. Like, let's see, last week I saw Troy Donahue, Sandy D. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Who are they? Mary, I mean, everything's going to happen to me. When I get to go to Hollywood, I'm going to see everything. I am going to go to Grumman's Chinese Theater. I'm going to go to the studio tours. I'm going to go see the Wax Museum. I'm going to see everything. i got to go tell Charlie. i just got to go tell him. I'll see you. He'll be so excited. Well, Granny, I just want to ask you one question before you leave. I mean, I'm very excited. I just want to ask one question. I heard something, and I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I heard that Charlie has a baby. Mary, I just told you that. Oh, well, then I guess that's where I heard it from. But what I wanted to ask you was, I did want to ask you this. Muriel thinks you're a difficult, you know, woman and, and, and all of that. Um, are you sure that they had a baby? Yeah, we got proof, Mary. You do have proof? Yeah. What kind of proof? It's a, a birth certificate. Oh, Loretta, a birth certificate's not proof. That You can buy a birth certificate. We can? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've heard that. You see, I saw this very special. They have this special documentary, two-hour television show called 60 Minutes. You mean you saw that on... Mary, if, if it was on 60 Minutes, it has to be true. Oh, yeah. If you can't believe 60 Minutes, I mean, what can you believe? There's a show called 120 so. Minutes, but that Mike was, was a totally different kind of show. Like, like more than 20 years later. Yeah. See, I find uh, my boss more reliable. Can you imagine any woman doing that, trying to get money out of Charlie and me? Well, I don't know so much about the money, but I mean, I could imagine anyone doing anything. But I know this. Mother love can make you do most anything. Hi, Mary. What's new? What about? 
I saw a very sad episode on the soap opera today. Oh, I saw it too. The horror of our days? Oh. No, no. It was the torment of our lives. What channel is that on? That's ABC. Oh, that explains why I haven't seen it. No, well, anyway. It was about these two sisters. Mary, every soap opera has two sisters. No, no. But these two sisters had very unusual problems. And one of the difference between this and other soap operas is that one of the sisters in this soap opera didn't know what was going on. Uh-huh. Okay, now, what happened is this. There is a man who is in love with one of the sisters. It's the older sister. Mm -hmm. The older sister is a married person. This man wants to go to bed with the older sister, but she won't go to bed with him because she's married. You got that? Yeah. He, this man, decides to marry the younger sister. Not the older one, the younger one. Mm -hmm. Because the older sister will not go to bed with him. Uh -huh. Even though he is still in love with the older sister. You want to know further? No. Well. So now today, one of the things that happened was what one of the sisters, is it, wait a minute, the older sister went to the man's apartment today. Mm -hmm. What channel did you say this was on? This is on, uh, it's ABC, it's 3 o'clock. Okay. Okay. So. Channel reality. The older sister is a very noble person mm -hmm. and a very righteous person and would do anything to protect the younger sister from a fate worse than death. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm telling you this story for a reason. I mean, there is a reason behind this. Mm -hmm. It has to do with these two sisters. You see, these two sisters are, are you and me. No. These two sisters, did you say, are you and me? Uh huh. Have you been watching the soap opera? How can that be? That's impossible. I just made this up. Mary, I know you did. And I know what you're trying to do. And uh, I'm, I'm really worried about you. I really am. But but there's nothing, you're, you're not going to do anything to ruin my marriage plans. And, and if you keep trying, I'm just going to have to tell Tom and see if he can do something about it. Lord, Mary, you are not going to believe it. Well, what happened? There was a mass murder on the next block. Did they let little baby Jess go out again? Oh, no, hon. They wouldn't let him out. I mean, you know, the way he goes around killing goats and chickens and everything. You mean there was another na mass murderer? Who said anything about a mass murder? You did. I heard you. Oh, no, no, no. You didn't hear her. You heard me. I was just guessing, though. Oh, well, I knew I heard something about a mass murder. Well, you mean there is no mass murder? No, there isn't. Oh, well, then I better be going. I'll talk to you later, Mary. Talk to you later. Oh, bye, Kathy. Well, let me get this straight. There is no mass murder? No. Good, I'm really glad. What is there? Well, there's something very strange going on in the neighborhood, Mary. Yeah. You know how we have this new family moving into the neighborhood, right? Yeah. Okay. So I just happened to be glancing out my window, wasn't staring at a moving in or nothing, just opening the curtains, letting some sunshine into my living room, when I happened to notice that they's moving in a piano. And I says to myself, who am I? I'm Loretta Hagers. I've got musical gifts. We would have something in common. These people with the pen and me. So I figures I'll just saunter over there, you know, and just give them a fine howdy-do, you know. Be friendly and neighborly. They weren't friendly and neighborly at all. Uh-oh, honey. Leastways, they weren't as friendly and neighborly as me and Charlie are. Whew. And Loretta... Few people are friendly and neighborly like you and Charlie. Few. But here is the strange part, Mary. What? Very strange. Weirdo. I got this old lady living there. 60. She's in debt. And she's also got her full-grown son there. 40. He's in day. <sighs> now for the weird part. Weird from the way they talked, I had 
sneaking feeling they've got another grown son living there with them. Can you imagine that? Whew, weird. Two grown sons living with their mother. I tell you, Mary, I just cannot leave for Hollywood with these strange kind of things happening in the neighborhood. Loretta, don't worry about it. You go to Hollywood. I'll take care of the money. What else have I got to do? Hmm? I tell you, things are really crazy around my house, you know that? Yeah, well, welcome to the club, huh? Listen, you ate the rest of that sandwich? Hmm? No, my stomach's not good. Thanks, sir. Yeah, I don't want to eat. You know, that, that Muriel, I can't believe it. I don't know how a person can live so long with so much bitterness without poisoning themselves dead. I guess I just don't understand something about women. Women. You don't understand women, huh? You want to know a woman is impossible to understand? Take Mary. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine her holding me up for money with, before she let me see my own living son with my own loving eyes? I mean, she's depressed all the time now, and she's got one has got one damn thing to be depressed about. Nothing. She, she's so damn sneaky. I don't know how she turns off the lights at night and trusts herself alone in the dark. You know what? She's got everything a woman could want. And she keeps saying to me that her life is empty. It's crazy. Oh, boy, you can say that again. It's crazy. Hey. Who's that? It's Ed McCullough. He and uh, another guy, I guess it's his brother, just moved in down the street from us. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't met him yet. They ain't very friendly. Neither is that woman that's with them. It's their mother, I guess. Well, that's because they, they haven't met anybody yet, Charlie. Tom. Hey, uh, Ed. My name's Tom Hartman. I'm, I'm one of your neighbors. You know? How, How are you doing? Well, boy, you're friendly. Right. I told you. Friendlier responses from a hound dog with distemper and a skin full of porcupine quills. Well, boy, boy, we gotta work on the line with that guy. What a drag. Maybe. Well, there, there might be more than that, Tom. What do you mean? I don't wanna worry you or anything like that. I mean, I, I've been thinking, I've been figuring it might have something to do with the union. Him? Ed McCullough? Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been here. The union brass has really got it in for you. They ain't sure they got it in for me because I beat their ticket. I got elected, Charlie. I beat them. Well, they don't stand for that. They don't take that line down. I mean, it could be that they... What? They're meaning to throw some muscle in. You mean McCulloch's a lead, a lead pipe guy, you mean? Could be. Uh-oh. Maybe you're right. My advice to you is don't turn your back on it. Now, I, like I said, I don't want to worry you. But I've heard of union mavericks, guys like you, ending up with two busted legs, a broken nose, and all kinds of heavy internal bleeding. That ain't any laughing matter. Who's was laughing? Uh, what's the matter with you? Are you sick? Uh, um. Well, how come you in bed? I feel floaty again. You mean you're tired? No. Floaty. Well, you, you know, you seem less up. I mean, I thought those pills you were taking were supposed to pep you up, you know? Well, I stopped taking those pills, you know? Because you see, what happened was I found that I was running around, but I wasn't really solving any of my problems. <laughs> so now I'm back on the tranquilizers. Huh. <laughs> In Milltown. No, never been there. I like that better. I thought they 
are one and the same thing. Well, they are. I like the extra syllables. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as they're solving your problems. Well, I don't know if they have it. See, now I don't care if I have any problems. Oh. Well, I, I guess the main thing is uh, that you, uh, you feel like you're getting better because of it. I do. I feel I'm feeling much better. Well, good. I am. I'm feeling much better except for my knuckles. Your knuckles? It's just my knuckles don't seem to be working properly. So you like me this way? Yeah, I like it this way. It's kind of nice. It's pleasant. I'm calm. It's nice. So, like, do you think that I should be always taking mepidmate and librium? Hmm? Well, if the doctor says it's okay. Uh, the only thing about it is, though, that, you know, like, aside from my knuckles, I just don't feel like I'm a person. Well, you're a person to me. But, see, what I feel like is, like, I'm no center, you know? I just have no spine, and I... I'm practically a basket case. Is that how you want me? I want you any way you want, sweetheart. Any way. I mean, you're enough for me, you know? <laughs> Todd. What? One more pill, and I'd be unconscious. You know what? Yeah. You, know, you don't understand me, I'm feminine. All woman. I mean, you are all woman. Like a Wanda Institute. Professional services rendered. Mona McKenzie. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars for Mona McKenzie. Mary, what the hell is going on here? We got a bill for two hundred and twenty-five dollars from your nutty sex therapist? Mary, we can't afford stuff like this. You can't you can't have stuff like this in our lives. I can't afford it, Mary. What's the matter with you anyway, huh? Mary, I cannot afford this kind of stuff. You understand that? Mary! Mary? Me. I can't talk to you now. Obviously, Mary has a lot going on, and I feel worried for her. I know she's a victim character, but I feel worried for her. The self-medication thing definitely looks ugly to me. Dennis was calling at the end of the episode, and we see a bill from Mona McKenzie from a few weeks ago. And 
$225 back then would maybe be, you know, a thousand or so nowadays. So it's a decent amount of money. I wish that Tom and Mary spent more time communicating, but they really don't seem to realize that that time needs to be set aside in their relationship. I think this was the most tenderness I'd seen between the two of them in quite a while, and it ended really poorly because of the other stuff going on. Kathy is moving forward with the relationship with Dennis. I don't know what Dennis was calling other other I don't know what Dennis was calling about other than to say that he loved Mary. Loretta's situation, that's weird. I guess we'll see more about that. So I have a lot of feelings right now and I haven't quite processed them. Maybe I'll bring them up a little bit, but I'm afraid for Mary. Oh, and then the new neighbors, the McCulloughs, who are seen as weird because they don't live the way that suburban families often do with uh, one husband and one wife and 2.6 kids are in the garage. But also, potentially, one of them could be out to kneecap Tom for union activity. So I I don't know what's going to happen there. The behavior from that dude was terse at best. Sometimes people just have a, a shell up and sometimes they are planning to kneecap you with, you know, a pipe or something. That was the April 12th, 1976 episode of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Let us Thank everyone for spending some time together, and we will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood.